Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. Well, the high profile trial of doomsday cult mom Lori Vallow Daybell continues in Boise, Idaho. She is charged with first degree murder, conspiracy, and other charges over the deaths of her daughter, Tylee Ryan, and her adopted son, JJ Vallow. She's also charged with her husband, Chad's first wife, Tammy Daybell, in a conspiracy to kill her. Our very own Gigi McKelvey, who's been there since day one, joins us now from outside the Ada County Hoare Courthouse. Uh, Gigi, good afternoon. Uh, I understand there's a latest uh, from the courtroom. There's a lot from the courtroom, including the cause of death of J.J. Vallow. Tell us all about what happened this morning. Well, we finally learned his cause of death was asphyxiation due to the bag being over his head that was duct taped around his neck. So essentially suffocation or, you know, just absence of breathing and just, just disturbing details all morning. It, they were saying that he had scratches on his neck that were anti-mortem, which means before death. So, it, you know, your mind kind of goes to, was he trying to get this off? Just very heartbreaking testimony that just brings it all home as to why we're here. And this little boy was found with his pajamas on, indicating to us that maybe he was taken while he was in bed trying to sleep and vulnerable? Well, the last photo of JJ, the morning he was last seen alive, he's in the same pajamas on the couch that he was found in. We know the last time he was seen was by David Warwick and Melanie Gibb, who were friends of Lori's and kind of in this group. Uh, he was asleep with his head on Alex's shoulder, and they took him upstairs to bed, and that was the last time he was seen. So he, he was killed at some point from that moment where he was last seen in that next morning when, when Alex was on Chad's property to bury him. Was there any indication that the children were given any type of drugs or alcohol from uh, the, I assume it was the medical examiner who was on the stand this morning? For JJ, they did call out one thing, and, and I don't remember the medical name for it, but it's uh, the street name could be liquid ecstasy. However, they couldn't determine whether that was just part of the decomposition process because that is present in our bodies. And so they weren't able to say with certainty whether he was given that or if that was just uh, part of the decomposition process. As far as Tylee, she had ibuprofen in her system, carbon monoxide, not lethal amounts or anything like that. So it, did, it looked like their toxicology was, was pretty clean. Uh, it, just that question of whether or not that one substance in JJ's body was naturally occurring or given. And J.J. also had bruising on his arm, leading to the jury maybe questioning whether or not he was fighting his assailant. Yeah, and what, what the medical examiner made clear is when there's a question of whether or not this is a, a bruise, he will make an incision into, this, into the skin to see if there's any hemorrhage just underneath that first layer of skin, and there was. So this was bruising that occurred before J.J. was murdered, and the indication, you know, obviously would be perhaps he was fighting for his life between the bruises on the arms and the scratches on the neck. Now, I understand there may have been something that could trigger uh, the jury in terms of uh, PTSD, in terms of the pictures that they watched today. Uh, what type of photos did they see? And more importantly, what was Lori Vallow Daybell's reaction to what was happening in that courtroom? Well, the jury, what they did was they did not show us in that were sitting in there on the big screen these close-up autopsy pictures. Lori's attorney said that it had more prejudicial uh, risk than value. So what they did was made it private just for the jurors. But it was up close, and we heard the descriptions. It was just different parts of the autopsy and, and his body being shown to the jurors with things pointed out. Lori, for the most part, sat with her back away from the monitor there at the defense table. She was crying. She was red-faced, wiping tears. And she didn't look, as far as I could tell, when they were showing Tylee's remains. But a couple of times, we did see her glance over at that monitor when they were going through JJ's autopsy. But she just kind of had her, her head resting on her hand, her elbow on the table, if you could kind of imagine that with a tissue in her hand and, and would occasionally wipe her eyes. And we all know, Gigi, that juries look at the defendant all the time. Did you see 
any reaction of any members of the jury looking over at Lori Vallow Daybell when this testimony was occurring about how her children died? Several did look her way, I guess, you know, to gauge any kind of reaction. Uh, there were jurors that were wiping tears from their eyes with tissues. But, yeah, they did. They did check her out a little bit to see if she was reacting. And it, it, she was reacting today. It, it did seem like she was crying. Yeah, and when the jurors were using tissues, okay, um, exactly, when was it? That's the first question. And did Lori Vallow Daybell have any different reaction from viewing the pictures of uh, JJ versus Tylee? Uh, the, the one time that I did see a juror specifically grab a tissue was after they were finished discussing those scratches on JJ's neck. Just what you think uh, could have happened there is just devastating to think about. Um, you know, and, and as far well, I'm sorry, what was that question about Lori? The second thing was there any type of visible different reaction from Lori Valaday Bell when the medical examiner was discussing and showing the pictures from JJ uh, versus from Tylee? There really wasn't much that I could see. I mean, like I said, she did glance over at that monitor a couple of times when they were showing JJ's photos, but not Tylee's. But other than that, she just stayed kind of in that one position with her elbow on the table and her, her head resting on a closed fist with a tissue in her hand and just sat there very still. And, you know, obviously she had to hear everything that was being described and, and we weren't able to see and, and obviously she wasn't looking, but just the description alone was, was uh, it painted a picture that was not pretty. Gigi, you have been sitting in that courtroom since day one and I, I use you kind of as a juror to gauge the jury. If you had to think about the testimony today, what was the one piece of testimony that you think is going to stay with you for the rest of your life? With me, oh, all of it. Just uh, when they described the different body parts of Tylee's that they recovered. Uh, and then with JJ, the, the scratches around the neck, it's just that visual that that little dude might have been fighting for his life, trying to get that, that bag off of his head, which was duct taped to around his neck. It, it's, just, it's just horrific to think about. And it really drives home while we're here and really makes all the Lori stuff, the lipstick, the hair, the makeup, it makes it all so secondary. It's about these children and what happened to them and, and the brutality in both their murders and their burials. It, it really will stick with me. Me for the rest of my life, no doubt. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Gigi has been tweeting from the courtroom. You can follow her on Twitter, Pretty Lies and Alibis. Gigi McKelvey, I want to thank you again for your fabulous, great reporting. I feel like I've been in the courtroom and I feel so sad for what's happened to uh, the family. We heard from Summer Shiflet and it's just totally tragic. Thank yeah. you, Gigi.